What's up everybody, Jeremy Weiss here with Weiss Tech Hockey and uh, I wanted to take a few minutes as we're progressing through our, uh, our coaching philosophy videos. Um, I wanted to take a few minutes to touch on a, a philosophy that I think is extremely important as you're beginning to progress and develop through um, systems, system hockey. And uh, that is the philosophy of, of timing, support, and multiple receiving zones. So these, uh, these concepts are so important because um, first, of all, first of all, it will allow you to, um, to adapt to different coaches, different coaching systems, different coaching styles, um, because whether the X's and O's are the same or different, um, the concepts still hold true of timing, support, and multiple receiving zones. Um, second, it allows for improvis improvisation. So if a play gets broken up and uh, it doesn't happen exactly the way it's drawn up, which most of the time is how hockey is played, um, very rarely do you ever have a play that happens exactly how, how you drew it up. Um, but uh, you know it's always a, a game of constantly reading, reacting, and adjusting. So um, these concepts of you know timing support and multiple receiving zones will allow you to do that as well and uh, give you the tools to be able to improvise and be an effective hockey player. So um, let's pull up the rank. I, I just wanted to kind of, uh, first of all, just kind of stress that I'm, I'm very, um, a big believer in teaching these concepts. And then I also want to kind of give you an example of what I'm talking about so that, um, you know, maybe you've, you've seen it before, maybe not, maybe you've had, it, had these concepts described in a different way. But uh, just so that we're all on the same page, um, because a lot of what we do moving forward, we'll be talking about, uh, you know, presenting yourself as an option multiple times, multiple receiving zones, um, and, uh, you know, reading, timing, uh, and supporting each other um, in the offensive zone, neutral zone, and defensive zone. So here we have a, uh, a little setup, and, and again, I'm not drawing the whole progression of the play. All I'm drawing is really uh, where the players will end up. So this is a progression um, where the puck has been chipped out, and now we're in a regroup setting. And uh, there are a number of different ways of doing a regroup. Uh, the one that I'm going to draw up for this demonstration is the swing regroup. So you can see we've got a defenseman here with a puck. We've got his partner slightly behind him, uh, probably about a 45 degree angle, um, supporting. Okay, so uh, we never want our defenseman to be the last man back with the puck. So there's a really good uh, quick example of support. Um, so he's a, not only a passing option, but also if this guy bobbles it, um, he's not going to be the last man back with the puck. So it's not going to give up a complete pure breakaway. Um, then we've got F1, F2, and F3. Now in this case, F1 is the first forward out of the, the offensive zone. Again, we're in a regroup mode here. F2 is the second forward out, F3 is the third forward out. So what we've got here is uh, we've got a potential regroup and we've got a number of different receiving zones. So I'm going to highlight the receiving zones in green and then we can uh, kind of describe how we want to present ourselves as options through these receiving zones. So here's the first receiving zone, it's right in front of the defenseman. Second receiving zone will be here, alongside the boards. And then we've got a third receiving zone over here. And I'll get it drawn out and then we'll move it a little bit. Okay, and what we're gonna do is, uh, all, all three players, because obviously we've had chalk talks, and we're, we've, we've discussed this, all three players know all three receiving zones. Um, and in fact, there could be a fourth receiving zone over here if the play was developing from the other side. So three receiving zones or possibly four, depending on how the swing happens. Uh, and then basically what we're going to do is as forwards, we are going to present ourselves as an option at each of these receiving zones. So the first forward back will swing through and present himself as an option through receiving zone one. And uh, he may or may not get the pass in the first receiving zone. If he does not get the pass, then he will present himself as an option in the second receiving zone. And uh, he may or may not get the pass there. Now, he's not just gonna go skating full speed through each receiving zone. What he's gonna do is he's gonna time it out and then present himself as the option um, when the defenseman is ready for the, to make the pass. So he's not gonna present himself as an option when this defenseman has the puck. He's gonna present himself as the option when this guy has the puck and it looks like he might be ready to make the pass. Uh, so if he doesn't get it there, he's speeding up through the receiving zone. If he doesn't get it there, he's gonna take back a little bit of ice um, be looking, and I like to incorporate an inside reverse pivot here so that he's not taking his eye off the puck carrier, which means that that defenseman may be able to pass to him at any point along his trajectory here. Um, and then he's going to open up and uh, again accelerate through the receiving zone, presenting himself as an option a second time. And then if he still doesn't get it, then instead of just coming up to the blue line and stopping, which is what I see a lot of youngsters do, uh, we're going to forget about that and we're going to present ourselves as an option a third time. So he's going to start coming across, 
and uh, presenting himself as an option in the middle for a third time. Now, if he still doesn't get it, which hopefully you can get your act together, hopefully the defenseman can get his act together enough to uh, have made a pass by then, um, he can just straddle the blue line and uh, when he gets to the boards, turn around and come back and represent himself in that third option again. But uh, by then, probably something will have happened, either that the defenseman will have made the pass or um, possibly caused a turnover. So um, you probably shouldn't have to worry about too much more after that. Now what we're going to do here is I'm actually going to draw this in a different color so that we don't get too confused. F2 is doing the exact same thing, except he's doing it about a line or half a line behind F1. So as F1 is getting to the first receiving zone, F2 is crossing the blue line. As F1 is getting to the second receiving zone, F2 is now swinging in to the first receiving zone. And so what does that do? That gives us at least two options. We'll talk about F3 here in a second, but at least two options for this man to, uh, to move the puck to. So by now he's got an option here or here. Um, and it could go to either one. If it goes, if it goes to the second man swinging through, then he can pick it up, move it up to the, to you know, headman the puck, or possibly hit a breakaway man with F3, who we'll talk about in a second. But if he doesn't get it here, then what do you think he's going to do? I uh, probably guessed right. He's going to he's going to uh, continue on, and present himself as an option in the second receiving zone. Uh, again, following the same tactics as F1 did. So as F2 is getting to the second receiving zone, F1 is getting to the third receiving zone, and then uh, if he still doesn't get it. He'll continue on to the third receiving zone as well. Um, F3 is going to be doing a similar tactic as well, presenting himself as an option here. So F3 can kind of loop in, depending on how you have it, loop in and present himself as an option in the second receiving zone as the first forward is getting to the first receiving zone. And then if he doesn't get it there, then he just continues around, presents himself as a breakaway man. So at this phase, as F3 is getting to the third receiving zone, you should have a man in the second and first receiving zones as well. So there are three good passing options for that defenseman. And like I said before, if that defenseman can't get his act together fast enough to make a pass uh, to any one of these guys, then you've got problems. So um, that is the concept of um, you know support, multiple receiving zones, and obviously there's a lot of timing that goes into this as well. Every All the timing is based off the puck carrying defenseman and then what the player in front of you is doing. So um, that is a really quick run through. As we go through this, all of our systems, all of our drills, everything is built around incorporating these main key concepts of timing, support, and uh, multiple receiving zones into every aspect of play. So uh, hopefully you enjoy that, and uh, we'll show you how these work in future videos.